All right, so this is gonna be a very quick uh, video just showcasing uh, how to properly name Booleans inside of Unreal Engine. Uh, this is something that I see quite often where bools are improperly named within, within the engine and it causes a lot of problems down the line in production. So I thought I'd make a video just showcasing a uh, proper way to do it. So to start, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a pawn. And we're just gonna call it a BP underscore character for now, just something super simple to showcase this. And to start, uh, I'm gonna go over to the event graph, delete the events, because we don't need them. And I'm gonna make a variable. And for this, it's gonna be a Boolean. And I want a Boolean that's going to basically um, be true or false for the character is either dead or alive. Uh, and I'm gonna name this kind of in a standard naming convention that you see a lot of in the Unreal Engine community or gaming in general. So I'm gonna just go with like, uh, is player dead, question mark. And drag that into the scene. All right, so we have a Boolean here and that Boolean is, uh, is player dead, question mark. So it's asking, is the player dead or are they alive? If they're dead, set it to true, so on. The problem with this is that this is pretty poor naming convention as there's a lot of redundancies within this name. However, you do see this name, like this this kind of naming convention rather, uh, within a lot of Unreal Engine tutorials and different things like that. And it kind of sets a bad precedent whenever somebody joins production and they kind of learn through Udemy courses or Unreal Engine tutorials as these names are very redundant, they cause a lot of issues and they can cause bugs later on down the line. We'll get into that in a little bit, but for now, I'm gonna showcase just some better ways to name this. So to start, uh, what are the redundancies? Well, first and foremost, this is a Boolean, right? So it's checking true or false. So the question is kind of, it's built in, right? It's a Boolean, it's implied. So we don't actually need the is or the question mark on this because that's implied, right? So we could just simply uh, duplicate this. And rather than having that stuff, we can just delete the question mark and delete the is and just go with something like player dead. Now player dead, that makes sense, right? That's a little bit more simple, it's straightforward, it's not, it doesn't have those same redundancies, right? Just is, you know, the player dead or player alive, right? If they're dead, set it to true. The problem with this is that it's still redundant in the sense that player is implied if this is on the player, which right now we're on the player pawn, right? When it comes to Booleans, they're not uh, used globally too much outside of a few instances where you, you know, go over to the player to grab it for like, uh, UMG, for instance, or you push it up to the game mode or game instance to put out to a save game or move between levels, something like that. But for the most part, they're pretty localized. So in this case, you know, we're on a player. So putting player here is fairly redundant. So why not just go with uh, dead, right? So instead of doing that, I'm just going to duplicate this just so we can have examples. So rather than player dead, let's just go with dead, right? Very simple just dead as an adjective, right? So this is basically saying dead, true or false, right? That's all you needed to do. You don't have to say player dead, true or false because it's on the player, player is implied. And it's a Boolean, so you're already asking true or false. So you don't have to say is and put a question mark because it's already implying that it's a question you're asking true or false. So this is a much more simple and straightforward naming convention that's honestly a lot better. However, there's one other thing we could do here and that is if we go ahead and use F2 just to change the name here, and I had a lowercase b in front of this variable. You can now see that I've added the lowercase b to just represent Boolean. However, in the actual event graph, it hasn't updated. And even if I drag one out, it's going to keep saying dead, right? And that's because the lowercase b is used internally by Epic Games. And because of that, they've actually written blueprints to get rid of the lowercase b on a boolean, right? So if it's a boolean, it starts at lowercase b as the prefix, it's gonna go ahead and remove that lowercase b. Now the reason for this is primarily just to make it more readable inside of the event graph or places like the details panel, uh, if it's a public variable, things like that. But it makes it very obvious when you're looking through like a large list or you're in an external debug or something like that, just seeing the name, you can tell that it's a boolean, right? So it makes it very simple to organize Booleans uh, and just kind of tell that they're a Boolean versus like a string or something similar. All right, so 
Uh, that's pretty much how to name a Boolean. Now I'm gonna go ahead and go over to another blueprint here just to showcase some more detailed examples. Now we have dead once again, and it's named exactly the same. We have B dead. But just to give you some other good examples, uh, held, so like is the player holding something or is the object uh, currently being held, right? So B held. You also have on fire, so B on fire. Um, so checking to see is the player on fire or not on fire. And the reason we have on here, instead of just fire to keep in line with kind of our previous naming convention of just doing adjectives, is because fire can have multiple meanings. So in this case, on fire, it's pretty obvious that it's implying they're on fire, there's fire on the player versus uh, this could mean uh, like firing a weapon. If the on wasn't here, it could be, okay, uh, when the weapon is fired, right? Something like that. Uh, so that that's pretty much why we have the on here, just to make it a little bit more descriptive in case we have uh, fire in multiple places with different meanings. Now, to showcase some poor examples, uh, you have is on fire, right? Once again, the is is redundant, is player, right? You're adding two redundancies there. Is player on fire question mark? You have three redundancies there. And you can see why this actually becomes a bit of a problem in that it really bloats your variable names. So later on in production, it can add a lot of um, clutter to your blueprints and C++ and just make lines a lot longer. And ultimately, it's not giving you any more information, right? On fire is giving me just as much information in the context of the player as is player on fire question mark. All right. So just now that we've uh, gone over kind of how to name Booleans pro properly, right? We can go over uh, kind of when to use Booleans and when not to use Booleans, because this is another thing that I see quite often in production and that people tend to use Booleans for fairly complex states that don't really warrant it. So a good example that I've prepared here is something like player movement states, right? The player can be in various movement states and they can only really be in one at a time. So you're either running or swimming or falling, right? Each of those is kind of happening at one time, right? You're not falling while also running. And so a lot of people, they tend to just go ahead and make Booleans for these. So you have like a Boolean for swimming, you have one for running, and maybe you have one for falling, right? And they just say, okay, if you're currently in the water, we're just gonna go ahead and say that you're swimming. So we're gonna set that to true. And then maybe you change the orientation of the player, uh, change the controls a little bit, disable some other things, you know, and boom, now you're swimming, right? That makes a lot of sense. And let's say you had two different designers. You had one working on swimming one day, and then you had a different designer, maybe a day or two later working on falling, right? So the first designer makes swimming, it works great. And then the second designer goes in, starts making falling. And let's say he just does like a, a cast or like a ray cast or something down from the player, checks to see if there's a mesh or like a landscape or anything. And if there is uh, within a certain distance, they're not falling. And if there isn't, set it to falling, right? So if they set it to falling, they set falling to true, and then they put them in a falling animation, disable movement, that kind of thing, right? Very simple. The problem is in actual production, let's say you set up falling to set to true, and then the person goes to test swimming later on. Well, guess what? Now they notice that while they're swimming, they're actually doing a falling animation because when they raycast down, they're not detecting anything because the water doesn't have normal collision on it. And because of that, it's assuming they're falling. So fallings get to getting set to true, but they're also in the water. So swimming is getting set to true at the same time. So they're doing swimming movement while doing a like a falling animation because that one took priority, right? So this is a common thing that can happen within uh, production where Booleans uh, tend to get used for some pretty complex states and it ends up causing a lot of bugs later on. So a good workaround for that is to use something like an enum. So let me drag that out, I'll drag a set out. So if you use an enum, right, you're setting up all of these different states and then you're just referencing whichever one they're currently in and then you're setting it and any other blueprints are gonna do the same thing with the same enum, right? So you're never gonna run into a problem of both running and swimming are set to true at the same time. It's gonna be one or the other versus Booleans, you could run into that and sometimes it's not gonna cause a bug, but sometimes it will. So it's just generally a uh, good practice not to. So hopefully this video was helpful and you gained some insight from it. Uh, these are just kind of little videos where I go over common things that I find in production. So if you 
uh, found this video useful, go ahead, drop a like, uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. And if you have questions about anything I showcased here or you want to request future videos or more detailed versions of these where I actually showcase some of these mechanics breaking, uh, just go ahead, comment, let me know, and I'm happy to uh, go ahead and make more. So have a nice day and uh, yeah, see you later.